We just thought we'd give you one more view of this elephant, everybody. He's sitting there. You can see his bottom disappearing behind some bush. And what we'll do is just go up onto this termite mound over here and see if we can't get a last look just before we go to the fireside chat. Hayden's got quite a long way to drive, so we're just going to have a look quickly before he gets here. Wind is good for us, still coming out of the north at the moment. And sometimes of an evening we come and sit on this termite mound and have sundowners, which of course is an excellent thing to do. I can't see him anymore, Vim. Wind is still good, so we won't be worried about it. We wouldn't be doing this if we weren't right next to the fireside there when there was light and vehicles. It's a, bit, it's a little bit dark for this. There he comes now. He's got quite nice tusks there. Now he's, a, he's still a long way away from us, everybody. He's a good 150 meters, 500 feet or so. But you can see how easily they disappear especially at this time of the night. Isn't that nice? And I wish you could hear some of the stuff here. Unbelievable sounds of the evening, the sort of late winter evening, blowing wind, a couple of those rain locusts or crested locusts going in the background. Bit of smoke in the air, some wood smoke from home, dust, wind, and of course the taste of victory on our tongues after Herbert found us as wonderful lions today. Okay, we'll go back to the fireside now. We'll see you there this time, I promise. How was that? <laughs> what a fantastic afternoon it's been, hey? Isn't this just brilliant? I'm so, so chuffed. I'm really excited to be back and uh, that little kid inside me is jumping up and down. As I said earlier in the afternoon, having this opportunity and this honour to come back uh, and do a week. And after, in Fireside Chat we'll explain a little bit more about the school's uh, programs over the next few days that I've come back to especially do. But uh, wow, what an afternoon. Karula and elephants and, and, and. So I've got a question from Rob in New Jersey. Welcome aboard, Rob, and thanks for uh, joining us. And great to have you. Uh, a good question. Uh, how many countries have I worked and travelled in? Well, I haven't necessarily worked in all of them. I suppose I've travelled through some on holidays and things like that. But I'm up to a uh, an embarrassing 51 at the moment, I think. Uh, and I wouldn't have been able to have that opportunity if it wasn't for Nat Geo. Most of those... I have done with National Geographic and I've been incredibly privileged. Here's this little stinky zookeeper from the suburbs of Sydney sitting in this vehicle here in this great land, South Africa, this amazing country that I'm driving around in this wonderful vehicle with wonderful people looking at the things I love. How'd that happen? I'll tell you that story another time, but uh, for for me, I, I, I'm really privileged, mate, to be able to travel like I have. But I've also got a beautiful wife and son now, so I have a tendency to not try and travel as much. Uh, so I'm slowing down a little bit, mate. Getting a bit grey. Got a question from Dilly uh, in Wisconsin. Hi Dilly, welcome aboard to you. Great to have you with us. Uh, I've done a little bit of work up in Wisconsin myself uh, with some black bear, um, what was it? It was black bear monitoring with uh, radio collars and telemetry. So a great part of the world you're in. Uh, 
Have I ever met Bindi Irwin? No, I haven't. Uh, Dilly and I, I'm, I know she is doing great work with kids, um, but I haven't had the opportunity to meet her, but you never know what uh, could happen in the future there. But thank you very much for watching and being with us today. Just having a last little scratch around here to see if there's anything out around here on my way to meet James at the fireside chat. Okay, we're going to just uh, head over there now. I can smell elephant. I definitely can smell elephant. Uh, can I go through there? Can I go through there? I have to go around here. I do apologise. Uh, I've taken a little wrong route, but um, I'm going to get to James as quickly as I can. I can smell elephant. I can't see them. Ah, there we go. <laughs> that must be the way that one that James, just over there, the one that James just had with him. He's just behind that bush. I could smell him, um, but I couldn't see him. But there he is. It might be our boy that was down at our water point with us. I'm just going to make a bit of a beeline now to meet James. What a great afternoon. And great to have you on board and all you new safarians that have joined us today. We hope we've hooked you. We hope you've uh, joined the Safari Live family because it is a big family. Um, wonderful people from the people that have that created this right from the beginning, Graham and Emily Wallington and Peter Bratt and those team, to all the people behind the scenes as well. This incredible team in Final Control, Bex today, Kirsty, um, Jerry, Connor, and everyone else, VM, just everyone. Um, and there's a big team behind this that makes it work. We, we just uh, get to drive around in the vehicles. Okay, so we're gonna cross over to James and I'll be right there in a minute. See you now. Hayden might be here in a minute, but so could a predator. I can hear Impala going ballistic behind us. Perhaps there's a leopard there at Gallego Pan. Welcome to the Fireside Chat, everybody. A 15-minute Fireside Chat we're going to be having. And we're going to be chatting ostensibly about the school's program that Hayden and the Taronga Zoo have put together all the way in Australia. And I'm going to attempt deeply not to try and put on an Australian accent when Hayden arrives. I have this dreadful habit of trying to emulate people I'm talking to. So I'm going to attempt it and I'm just going to do a little bit of it now so as to get it out of my system before he arrives here and I make a fool of myself in front of him. That will be all that I'll be doing in Australian this afternoon. For those of you who are in Australia, please forgive the uh, poorness of my Australian accent. Very nice. Okay, what an unbelievable drive we've had today. Incredible on foot stuff. We weren't going to go out on foot of course. It was going to be just a nice uh, sort of two drives. One hoping to find lions, one hoping to find leopard. And uh, well, that did happen. But one of us of course was on foot. And I would urge you, any of you who are thinking about coming out to Africa on a safari, if you can include a walking safari, I promise you now you won't regret it. You don't have to be very fit. You don't have to be a great survivor man. You don't have to be a special forces operative. You've just got to be able to put one foot in front of the other for a couple of hours at a time and you can come on the most unbelievable trips because I promise you now, even though we get much better views of these animals in the vehicles and the vehicles are an extremely important part of what we do, to do a walking safari and see lions on foot like we saw them, to see elephants like that on foot, even though they're a long way away from where we are. I promise you it touches something very deeply within your soul and it was a profound privilege, especially like I said to you earlier, to walk with Herbert today. Uh, what a great joy that was. Um, Hayden is just behind us now. So I think while he is making his way in, let's go and have a look at the clip that he's made for what he's going to be doing here. Take a look at this. Hi guys, my name's Hayden Turner. The next time I talk to you, I'm going to be in Africa, but at the moment I'm right in here in Sydney's Taronga Zoo, where I currently work. 
I'm heading across to Africa to be a part of this fantastic program called Safari Live. We're going to broadcast live from Africa right into your very classroom. So get your teachers on board, look at all the links on this page and get connected. We're going to come to you, you're going to be getting on the biggest safari vehicle on the planet. I'll see you in Africa. And here he is everybody. Hello. How are you? How are you? Mate? Yes, good. Good, to see a you, good mate. drive back. Gosh, that was just a fantastic, absolutely fantastic afternoon. Not awful. Not awful, no. just amazing. Good. When we first started off, I felt uh, I'd brought the gremlins back with me. Yes, uh, <laughs> I thought you had as well. <laughs> so I was a bit concerned there, but thank you for your honourable gesture that you did and swapped vehicles with me. It was very kind of you. My pleasure. But you had a lovely uh, time seeing um, some creatures on foot. Unbelievable. Wow. But tell mostly, me, talk me through that. I mean, the most, as I've been banging on about for some time now, the most amazing thing about it, of course, was finding the animals. Yeah. But to witness Herbert's skill. Yeah. as we walked through the bush was Incredible. profound. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we've looked, looked at your clip. Nature uh, okay. is beautiful, <laughs> first of all, would like to know how long you're going to be with us, and then maybe you can go into a little bit more about the background of, of what it is that you're doing here. Sure, sure. Um, I'm here for about a week, probably until next Friday or Saturday. I'll probably have to leave Saturday, I can't quite remember the schedule. But we've got four days, um, dedicated hour each day in the morning from six till seven that we've um, collaborated wild earth and the taronga conservation society uh, we've collaborated uh, with this uh, sort of initiative to get safari live into as many schools as we possibly can in the state of new south wales in australia where i live now i've left the uk about four months ago got offered a job back at the zoo uh, that i first started out in and we're going back there we've moved back there my wife and my boy and i and we're all there and um, I had a safari in Namibia to do, and I thought there was a week in between. Why don't we get this together? So what's going to happen is tomorrow morning we're going to go on drive. Uh, we start at what time is it? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. So half an hour earlier than normal. Everybody. Yes, right. So we start at six o'clock, half an hour earlier than normal. And from six till seven, that will be two to three in the afternoon uh, in Australia. And the kids, nearly 3,000 of them, mate nearly 3,000 students and many of them that will never ever get this opportunity to see or experience this. We're going to give these kids an unforgettable life-changing experience. We may flick the love nature switch in some little kids tomorrow and uh, we've got about 80 to 100 schools I think so Brilliant. very excited mate and anything can happen. No script as you just saw in the bush here in this incredible country. I'm so lucky to be here. Yeah. It's great to have you here. Now, Aaron in New Zealand, which of course is across the... Uh, was that your uh, Scottish what? accent? No, yeah, yeah, it was a sort of a, a Scottish accent. <laughs> Sorry. I, I told Sorry. you it would happen, everyone. I warned you, and it has happened. Uh, Aaron in New Zealand, I think you're somewhere around Wellington, if I'm not mistaken, but I might be wrong. Anyway, you're interested in... <laughs> Sorry, I can't stop myself here. Um, you, you want to know what the best thing about being is, back is from Hayden. The best thing about being back, Aaron, is this team. I have to tell you, working with these guys is an absolute experience. <laughs> James will probably laugh about that experience in itself because it is like coming back to a family. Um, it couldn't happen without every individual in this team. But that combined, equally as important, this habitat and this, this particular place, Juma, Arethusa, Cheetah Plains, and the surrounding areas that we are allowed tra to traverse mm. is just such a special part of the world. I often used to think that I was born in the wrong country, you know. I love Australia so much, but South Africa, you guys have got one of the most beautiful countries on the planet. We think it's the most beautiful country, absolutely. Yeah, it is a really great place. Now, Cheryl, you want to know about um, young Master Turner and Master Turner. whether he is uh, as interested in animals and conservation as you are, what are his interests? He, Master Turner, Jack Turner, yes, turned 10. Don't forget that, James, when you meet him. It's right. not nine anymore, he's 10. He's 10, got it. Big 10. He is doing very, very well. Uh, he's slotted into school and sport very well in Australia. Uh, he is interested in animals. He's got a very, very caring soul uh, about animals. I wouldn't say he's obsessed like his dad, uh, which is great. You've got to let kids just be and whatever comes out naturally for them. Uh, he's a typical little boy, Pokemon Go <laughs> and everything else that goes with a little little 10 year old boy and kids. But you know, when I do get him into the wild and I do get him into places that um, have very, very special uh, components to it, whether it's an experience or whether it's the wildlife, he does 
really get connected okay. and that that is great that's a great feeling for me that's right. for sure and then it's not only i mean would this a very special anniversary for your zoo 100 percent, james and what is that well look taronga zoo back in sydney has been uh, around for 100 years this october so it's our centenary uh, year and it's a very very important time for us um, when i left the zoo mm. uh, i worked there from about 89 to 98 and then i came to africa and then a beautiful woman walked into my world and I chased her around the world and we ended up in the UK. But we've gone back to Australia now, back to that same zoo. And when I left that zoo, it was still a great zoo. It did incredible education, incredible conservation work, and of course a recreational uh, facility for people to go and enjoy. But it's gone to the next level now, mate. It is absolutely incredible the amount of... It's an international brand that we are doing incredible things in the wild and the theme or the slogan for want of a better term for our zoos two of them one in sydney and one in dubbo our western mm -hmm. plains zoo which is an open plains zoo is called for the wild yeah and that's we are a, a behavior change organization that manages a zoo now mm. i think that's a, a managed uh, i think just say that again we are a behavior change or a be sorry let's try that again just no, for me this time done. Yes. A behaviour change organisation that manages a zoo. Yeah. Now that's a pretty crucial thing because I mean, imagine there are viewers sitting there now thinking zoo is a terrible thing. Mm. And I know that I have pontificated about, I think especially in South Africa, the importance of zoos because we have hundreds if not millions of kids who will yep. never come into the wild. And quite apart from the education, there's also a whole lot of research that goes on. Yep. There's a massive amount. It's a behavior change Funding. organization. Yep. Yeah. So when a person, well, you're exactly right, James. Everything you just said was absolutely perfect when it comes to what we try and do. Yeah. If you can get those little people, or adults alike, it's never too late to have that behavior change. Yeah, they come through the doors, and if they walk out, and change one behavior in their mm. life to improve a habitat, uh, a climate change, or whatever it may be, mm. uh, we've done our job. And they are facilities to do exactly that. But Safari Live is also another angle for us to bring into the zoo and our yeah. education. And I've just been so excited about this. It's yeah. going to be a great four days, folks. Good. Now we have a question from Gracie in Ohio. Gracie uh, has two favorite animals. Her first one is a hippopotamus. Um, unfortunately, they've been a little short on the ground. Sorry about that, Gracie. Uh, hopefully, the rains will bring them back. And also elephants. And she would like very much to know what your favorite is. Okay. Is this our Gracie? This is our Gracie. Gracie, how are you? <laughs> so good to hear you. That's fantastic. Gracie, my favorite animals. It's a hard question, but I know... Let's split it. Can we split it into African animals and then maybe maybe in Australia? <laughs> we, could, we could go all around the yeah. globe there. Giraffes are one of my favorite animals on the planet. There's no doubt about that. Giraffes are... I love. I've worked with them a lot. I've hand reared a giraffe in a zoo. I was the daddy of a giraffe. I used to have to hold up a milk bottle for this giraffe to drink 15 litres. Or how many is that? That's about... That's three gallons. Three of, gallons no, or yeah. of, Four gallons. Of, of milk a day. He was uh, on at one point and uh, he was growing at a rate of knots. So giraffe are very important to me. Rhinoceros are very important to me. Uh, elephant. Chimps and, and gorillas as well. But then I also love some smaller things too. I'm really, really into insects and small things like you are. We've had some mm. fine times in the tent yes. uh, when we were up here on Big oh, Cat wonderful. Week. And just yeah. tiny little things like those stingless bees yes. that had the little nest in the back of the giraffe skull. So Gracie, in a nutshell, everything but giraffes, rhinos, elephants, leopards, yeah. lions, cheetah, <laughs> wild dog. I'll stop Lots. that. Great to right. hear from you. Thank you, Gracie. Uh, we'll stop him there. Now, Jeffrey, you, you say you agree that zoos are the most important or play an incredibly important educational role, but you want to know if Taronga A has leopards, because obviously leopards are very um, dear to the people here. How do they adapt? Um, we don't have leopards. Uh, but you're exactly right, zoos do, do play a, a very, very important role in conservation and more so today than ever. Mm. Uh, so fantastic uh, for highlighting that for us. We don't have leopards, um, it's just a species that we haven't got. Uh, I think some zoos have a tendency or 
some of the better zoos in the world uh, have a tendency to have species that occur in their region. Mm. Uh, mm. You have a better impact sometimes if you're focusing on species that are actually adapted to the climate they're living in. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely, you know, there's always room for improvement. There's always changes. But I think it's, there's a really great uh, paper that's just come out and, and I think I mentioned it in Drive just a second ago, James, but results or research has shown that bombarding people with facts mm. constantly doesn't work. necessarily work. Mm. The story, and that's why Safari Live and Taronga Zoo and all what we do, the story is king. Yeah. And people follow that story. If they get on board with that story and follow that story, then you've got them. You've got them as they're your, your change agents. They're yeah. your soldiers in your yeah. army. Yeah. So um, we, we really try and do that. But Which I think to a large extent is why we... Um, why tourism here is such an important facet of things. I mean, obviously not everyone's going to be able to do this, but we do hope desperately that the people come here, leave here changed, and will go home just with a, a touch, a feeling of wilderness, and that they will absorb that. And the zoo, I suppose, the first step to that. Absolutely. Then, slightly less seriously, you, um, you were operating in Surrey, of course, which is yeah. a very pretty part of England. Mm. Um, I've always thought that, uh, you know, it's a kind of a wind in the willows type of a thing. And even though not huge animals, a beautiful part of the world, oh, right? Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. And folks, I've said this to you many times before, and I think all of us on Safari Live agree, and there's, well, there's a big pool of us out there in the world that believe every single habitat matters. Yeah. You know, we, we get bombarded with really beautiful, big, gorgeous megafauna all the time on documentaries mm. but you know we've seen some of the most incredible things on safari live that you've been down lying down on the ground you yeah. know like waxing lyrically about some caterpillar oh, yeah. yeah and and brent leo smith um stefan and everyone uh has just had such an incredible sort of understanding of the small stuff yeah. as well and i think when we share that like surrey did didn't have a lot of big mammals mm. but had unbelievable beauty mm. butterflies invertebrates flowers birds and small mammals yeah you have to get kids excited yeah. about that as well because it all matters yeah. great stuff all right everyone that's going to be it from us now um, just a reminder to you that we are of course going to be live for the whole of the week in the morning 15 minutes earlier so from six o'clock to nine o'clock in the morning a huge big welcome back to hayden turner Lovely Thanks, to mate. have you with it's us. It's an absolute pleasure. And I hope that you will join us. It will be ostensibly for the schools in the morning. The afternoons will run precisely as they have. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow at 0600. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.